In the previous episode, Kuro's and Tendo brought Hayakawa in front of cell number 108, inside which there was future Davil. Kuro's unlocks the door and sends him inside, where Hayakawa sees a glowing big eye in the dark. Now seeing Hayakawa, future Devil appears in front of him. He has a big eye inside his stomach, and because of this, he looks very strange. He starts saying the future rules in front of Hayakawa, and then asks him also to repeat like that. But Hayakawa does not listen to him, and says that he is here to make a contract with him. So, he just asks to tell him what he wants from him. Now hearing this, future devil gets angry with him, and says that his attitude is the worst ever. However, he tells Hayakawa to show him his future, because the details of a contract depend on the future. That's why, he tells him to hurry up and stick his head into his stomach because without it, he can't see his future. After this, Hayakawa gets ready to do the same, and sticks his head into his stomach. This is how, future devil gets to know how Hayakawa is going to die in the future. After this, he talks to him about the contract, and asks to let him live in his right eye. Hearing this from him, Hayakawa starts thinking about it. Seeing this, future devil tells him that he must be thinking what it is, because he will die in the worst possible way. Hayakawa is a little surprised to hear this from him. The future devil then says that he must be curious how he will die, and then goes to tell him about it. But Hayakawa himself refuses to talk to him about it, because he is not interested in knowing. After this, he says that as long as he can kill those he wants to kill, he does not care what comes after. Now, he asks him to hurry up and gets in his eye. Meanwhile, Denji and Power are practicing with the old man named Kishibe, where he still beats them both very badly but we see that this time they have left a cut on his face. So, Kishibe gives their moves a perfect score, and from now on, they don't need to train every day, because they will do it once a week. Hearing this, Denji and Power feel a bit relaxed, but Kishibe advises them to keep a cool head, even when they get excited. Also, they need to always remember their weapons and the situation, but in light of their training, they will have real combat tomorrow. But Denji and Power don't understand this and Power asks about it. Then Kishibe tells that they are going to capture Katana Man and Snake Girl, who killed Haimno and the others. However, it will be the new Division 4's debut. So if the mission fails, Division 4 will be finished. Further, Denji and Power will be put down via a real battle with him. Hearing this, Denji also tells the Kishibe if that happens, he will let him go without killing him, because he has made him stronger. So, he can kill more devils now. And if he does that, he will get a date with Miss Makama. That's why, he is excited for that. After some time Kishai meets Makama, where Makama praises him for working so hard. Then she says that she knows he has been quite busy. So, she hopes that he can keep training Denji and power. But Kishai says that he is sick of them already. Because every time a dog he trains dies, and he drinks more alcohol. He thought he would not feel guilty even if the toys broke. But his mind has got weak with age, so he gets attached to toys. After this Makama asks him what he wanted to talk about. Then Kishibe starts talking about the ambush on the special divisions. He tells Makama that public safety are no fools, but she knew about it and let it happen. To which Makama says that she was ambushed too. Then Kishibe says that whatever inhuman things she does, or even if she kills his dogs, as long as she is still on the human side, he will leave her alone. But only as long as that is true. Hearing this, Makama tells Kishibe that all she wants is to save as many people from the devils as possible. So, if this mission succeeds, Division 4 will be all over the news. And then they will have more freedom to operate and save more people from the devils. But on this Kishibe calls her a liar. After which Makama does not speak anything. In the next scene, we see a big building, where some people are guarding outside with guns. Because Katana Man and Snake Girl are hiding here. But at this time, Katana Man seemed troubled by something. Then one of his men comes and tells him that they had the big boss move to the villa. So, he should go too. But Sawatari is not ready for this at all. Because as long as Makama is alive, there is nowhere to hide in Japan. So, they should be prepared to meet the enemy here. After listening to her, the people of Katana Man start getting angry on her. Then Katana Man starts saying that if Grandpa were here, he would never stand for running away. And the damn Denji is in Division 4. So, Katana Man has to rip out his heart this time. But Sawatari says that there is no need to worry about the leader, because he can be revived anyway. But if they are staying here, they need to worry about not getting bitten instead. But the people of Katana Man don't understand what she's talking about. That's why they start asking about it. Then Katana Man tells all of them that their secret weapon is underneath, which is Grandpa's gift when he died. Because there is a zombie army made of scum 
who could not pay back their debts. After this, Sawatari reveals that humans bitten by zombies will turn into zombies. That's how they will finish Division 4. The next day, we see Hayakawa. He is in with Kuros and Tendo. Kuros tells Hayakawa that they are going back to Kyoto once they are done sightseeing. So, they will probably never see him again. That's why, he asks Hayakawa to let him ask a question. Because he heard that he is after the gun devil. But he does not believe that Hayakawa can kill it. Kuros then tells Hayakawa that he lost to an enemy who killed almost 20 members of the special divisions. So, he wants to know what makes him think that he can defeat the devil that killed millions around the world, because their lives were ruined by the gun devil too. That's why they joined public safety, but they don't even consider killing the gun devil, because anyone in their rational mind knows it is impossible. That's why he says that this thing about him makes him more angry, because he is so weak, yet he gives himself a goal like the main character of a manga. So, it's so cringy and it gives him goosebumps. Hearing all this, Hayakawa tells Kuros to keep that gibberish to himself, because they should just stand back and watch. When he loses and dies, they can laugh at him, because he is aware that he has lost already. But he also knows that he could not go on living if he did not do this. After this, Hayakawa gets out from the car at a place. Also, he thanks Kuros for the advice. But then Kuros stops Hayakawa once again. He tells him that he is very annoying, so he is rooting for him. Also, he decides to give him one last piece of advice. Because everyone in the special divisions is insane, so he needs to watch out. But Hayakawa says nothing on this matter and Kuros leaves from here with Tendo. On the other hand, we see Makama. She has gone to meet a mafia because she wants his cooperation in her mission. The mafia tells Makama that some of their young bloods went rogue and fired guns in Tokyo, so he will answer all her questions, but he hopes that she can understand he didn't order this hit. He then shows Sawatari's photo to Makama and says that the one behind it all is this Sawatari girl, because she has been tricking their youngsters into making a contract with the gun devil. Makama asks the mafia what the terms of the contract are. And he tells her that for 20,000 yen to the gun devil, they can get guns and ammo. However, he is also surprised that if devils need money in their world too. Now, he thinks that they are not so different from humans after all. Just then Makama asks him to write down the names of everyone who has a contract with the gun devil. Hearing this, the mafia also agrees with her and says that she can throw them into jail and teach them a lesson. But then Makama tells him that not only in his organization but she needs the names of those from other syndicates too. The mafia gets scared after hearing this. He tells Makama that she doesn't have a clue how things work here. So, even he knew those names they would have a war on their hands if they found out that he squealed. To which Makama says that it is for the safety of the public. So, she would appreciate his cooperation. But the mafia is not ready to accept this. He asks if she knows what necessary evil is. Because if different organizations went into war with each other, foreign mafias would find their way into Japan. So, he admits that they do some bad things, but the Chinese and Russian mafias are far worse than them, so they are the ones keeping them out. He then says that just like that the devil hunters keep humans safe from devils, the Yakuza keep the Japanese people safe from foreigners, because they believe many devil hunters are uneducated. So, it is natural that she would not understand. Now, all the people around her also start laughing at her. Just then Makama takes out a small bag from her. Seeing this, the man says that he would not betray his own for some change. Then Makama tells this is not money, but it is everyone here is parents, grandmothers, grandfathers, brothers, sisters, lovers or wives' eyes. The mafia also gets scared after hearing this. However, he opens the bag and tries to check it. Inside this, there are many eyes. Now, the mafia is very much afraid of this thing. But Makama tells him not to worry about it, because they have someone in public safety that can put their eyes back. But if he can be so kind as to cooperate, she will introduce them. Meanwhile enraged by this, a man goes to kill Makama. But Makama uses her power, due to which, blood starts coming from the nose of that man and he falls down. Makama tells the mafia that the necessary evil he talked about is just an excuse to justify his crimes. But their society doesn't need those excuses, because the truly necessary evils are always kept collared and controlled by the state. Hearing this, the man gets very scared. On the other hand, Division 2 and the police have surrounded the basement and the ground floor exits. So, Division 4 is responsible for suppression inside the building. Now, Sawatari tells Katana Man to kill as many public safety members as possible and take Denji's heart, because at least the two of them should be able to escape afterwards if she uses the snake. Now, Katana Man decides to kill Denji this time, but Sawatari tells him not to get too excited. On the other hand, Denji, Power, and Kobni are also here, 
but Kobni is feeling too scared and she starts talking about going to home. To which Denji says that she can go, but he had training, so he will kill that guy with hair on his temples. Power says that the training even made them smarter. That's why, both are very excited for today's combat. Hayakawa is also watching all their actions. He comes to Kishaib and asks about the plan. To which Kishaib says that there is no plan, because they are throwing everyone in the special division at that building. He then sends Hayakawa, Denji, Power, and Kobni inside the building. That's when, Lieutenant Shina of Kanagawa Police also comes here. Also, Furuno of Division 2 is here. Kishaib then introduces himself as the captain of Division 4. He tells that the police in Division 2 will be blocking the ground floor and the basement exits, and Division 4 will go in to subdue the terrorists. But there is only one thing they should be aware of, because most of the members in Division 4 are non-humans. So, if they let them escape, the damage will be worse than a terrorist attack. That's why, they need to be prepared for a battle against Division 4 as well, and he will give them the rundown on their members. On the other hand, we see a shark fiend. He starts attacking the zombies. We see this one can swim on any surface, and he can take a devil form for a short period. He starts to kill all the zombies very easily. Meanwhile, he is about to attack the violence fiend, but he kicks the shark fiend down, because he thought he was also a zombie. After this violence fiend also starts attacking the zombies. Normally, they should be weaker as fiends than they are as devils, but this one is still too strong as a fiend. So, Kishaib has made him wear a poison dispensing mask and asked him not to remove it under any circumstances. Meanwhile, Violence Fiend sees a lady here and asks her to leave because she will turn into a zombie if she gets bitten. Just then he comes to know that the lady is actually a devil. After this, she changes into the spider devil. She usually takes a human shape and devils with human-like appearance tend to be friendly to humans. However, devil is a devil and she also starts attacking the zombies. During this, she was looking very dangerous. Meanwhile, the severed head of a zombie comes to angel devil and she swallows it. However, this one is special. A devil who is not hostile towards humans but does not approach. Because if anyone touches this one, his lifespan will get absorbed. Meanwhile, Hayakawa and Denji also come here and they start killing zombies. Just then Angel Devil asks Hayakawa if he got a handkerchief. Hearing this, Hayakawa gives his handkerchief to her. Angel Devil asks him why he got so close to her. Because his life will be shortened if he touches her. Then Hayakawa says that it is not possible through cloth. Suddenly, a man tries to shoot Hayakawa, but Angel Devil saves him by using her wings. After this, Hayakawa kills the man. Now, he tells Angel Devil to move him outside, to which Angel Devil says that he is ordering her around. But still, it is better than fighting. Now, Hayakawa tells Denji and Kobni to leave these two fiends, because they are going after Katana Man and Snake Girl. Hearing this, Denji asks if he knows where they are. But even Hayakawa did not know about it, so he decides to go separately. After this, Hayakawa comes to the fourth floor, but no one was there and blood was everywhere. Suddenly a man tries to shoot him, but Hayakawa manages to kill him. Just then four more people come in from him and surround Hayakawa, but suddenly their nose start bleeding, and all four are killed one by one. Hayakawa gets shocked seeing this. On the other hand, we see Makama and she comes out smiling. After this, Hayakawa goes ahead into the building where he meets Sawatari on the way, and she stands in the middle to block his way. Now, Hayakawa tells her to surrender, but she orders the snake to spit out the hand ghost. Seeing this, Hayakawa also gets ready to face her, but we see that Sawatari's nose is bleeding. After this, the hand ghost starts attacking Hayakawa. Then Hayakawa also confronts her with the help of his sword and cuts off many of her hands. Therefore, Sawatari notices that his moves have improved. Then Future Devil tells Hayakawa that if he will use his power, his right eye will see a silver in the future. However, Hayakawa does not use his power and confronts the hand ghost again with his sword. But actually, facing the hand ghost was not that easy. So, Hayakawa seems weak in front of her. But this time, he cannot stand in front of her for long. Because the hand ghost now starts attacking him even more aggressively. She starts wounding Hayakawa and holds his neck in her hand. Now, Hayakawa is unable to do anything and Sawatari orders the hand ghost to strangle him to death. On hearing this, the hand ghost starts strangling Hayakawa, but now he is unable to do anything to save himself and passes out. After this episode ends, watch the video of the left side if you have missed the previous part, and subscribe to any summary for more anime recaps.